Hey, happy Thursday, everyone. I hope you're doing great. Well, today we are actually finally going to finish up Mark 12 and with three little um, short pericopes of Jesus and his teachings. And um, they're really actually profound in what Jesus is telling the people. So, let's dive into that. But first, let me tell you, hi, I'm Pastor Mark, and I am with Heights Christian Church. We are going through the Bible as a body of believers for five years. We will get through the entire scriptures in five years. Actually, we are on year five, and we will be completing it at the end of this year. But it doesn't matter where you started, you can start today and do it. Subscribe to this channel. You'll get notifications and you will be uh, able to read along with me and the rest of Heights Christian Church um, the scriptures. So we would love for you to be a part of that. Anyway, let's go get into uh, the, fi the final stages of Mark chapter 12 and let's read that together. While Jesus was teaching in the temple courts, he asked, why do the teachers of the law say that the Messiah is the son of David? David himself, speaking by the Holy Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. How then can he be his son? The large crowd listened to him with delight. Interesting. As he taught, Jesus said, Watch out for the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and have the most important seats in the synagogues and places of honor at the banquets. They devour women's, widows' houses and for a show make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished most severely. Verse 41, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people there threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They, they all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. All right, so in these three pericopes that are, that are done, let's just do really quick. Jesus warns people not to be like the teachers of the law because they operate from a source of pride and hypocrisy and that they've got a punishment waiting for them. And then... The, the widow giving her offerings that she gave all she had, her percentage was 100%. Others gave smaller percentage. One thing I'm going to say about that is, listen, I encourage you, your local church, um, if you're not giving to part of the ministry, then you are missing a blessing. And you need to be a part of that. You need to look at your faith in many ways. How, how important is your faith to you? Well, I'll look at your pocketbook to see how important it is. I'm just going to say that. All right, but let's dive into this, whose son is the Messiah, that Jesus said. And the, why, are, why are the large crowds listening to him with delight? Well, what Jesus is saying here is this conundrum of David calling his son, or farther down, Lord and you know, the designation of Messiah is also called the son of David. But why is he the son of David? Because David himself, from the Holy Spirit, is calling him Lord. And he's his son. So what, what Jesus is driving at here is that the Messiah would be a man, but he would also be God. And that made the teachers of the law and the Pharisees and the high priests crazy 
because this is one of the reasons why they felt like they could crucify and kill Jesus because they knew who his parents were. They knew who he was and he's calling himself God. Well, absolutely. Jesus, because of his miracles, proved that he was God, but yet he was also a man. Why is that important? Well, let's look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. So it Jesus is showing is that he is fully man, but he's also fully God. Man plus God equals Jesus. Now, this is important because if um, if Jesus had not been a man, then he could not have empathized. It could not have been subject to the temptations that all men face. Yet he did, but because he was God, he was able to resist all these temptations. If he was just man, he would have sinned. But because he was man, and because he was sinless, then he was able to become the perfect sin offering for all sin. That's why when John sees Jesus, he says, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the lamb obviously being the sacrifice that is put on the altar. And Jesus, when he allowed himself to be killed and put on the cross, his death was the payment for our sin. And that's the reason why we have hope. Because he also resurrected. And when he was resurrected, that means that we can be sinless because the sins that we've committed have already been paid for by Jesus. And because he rose from the dead, we too have the hope of eternal life. Wow, if that isn't good news, nothing is. I hope you enjoy your day and I hope that we will see you tomorrow.